Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to open the uh, special meeting of the Board of Selectmen for Tuesday, February 21st, 2023. Can we start with the Pledge of Allegiance? Please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so um, we're waiting on uh, Selectman Straighten, but we do have a forum. <coughs> um, Go ahead and start with correspondence. They're usually mentioned, or can I just mention what we received? You can mention that what we received. Okay. So um, I did receive correspondence to the uh, first selectman of the board selectman today. Um, had a conversation this morning with uh, Paula Antalini, and uh, it was in regards to the agenda with respect to the ARPA funds that we have on the agenda. Um, there were there were a couple of things. One was about the turf field feeling that doing the lights out of ARPA funds is not uh, really what we should be doing and that we should be looking maybe in the future at, uh, here he is, um, we should be looking at the possibility of you know, more pandemic costs so could we have resurgence of pandemic and holding funds in reserve for that. Um, also, um, some talk about, or, or some questions about how we noticed the meeting, which I, I want to address. Um, when we noticed the, the meeting, uh, well, it was improperly noticed for the regular meeting, we have a new person in the office. So at that point, we had two choices. We either just run with a meeting that wasn't hybrid or go ahead and redo it as a special meeting and do a hybrid meeting. So in the interest of transparency, we wanted everybody to be able to come on hybrid. We thought that was more important. So um, the problem was, uh, from her perspective, there's no public comment, which is why we have correspondence. So that's that's kind of what that decision we make. So I want to just put that out there to, to the public. Um, and you have correspondence, which you just came in and just kind of explained what it was. Okay. Um, and move from there. First selections report. Um, obviously, very informal, been here a week and a half. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> sat down day one, and I'll tell you this uh, we have a lot of great people in the building and across the town who are town employees and made me feel very welcome. There's no question that people are on top of their jobs and on top of their game. So, um, I felt really great about it. Uh, even the first week, at the end of the week, we had a, a transformer blowout. I don't know who knows or doesn't. We had a transformer blowout behind the municipal center. And, um, you know, within, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes, we had a resource on the scene because of the good work of the maintenance folks. Um, we actually had uh, people coming and look at the boilers all weekend because we had all kinds of issues. But one thing I learned is the town employees were on top of it. And um, also our internet. <laughs> it was fried at the moment. Uh, our IT folks did a wonderful job getting that back online. So... All in all, it was a adventurous first week and a half, and um, we're happy to be here. And I'll uh, I'll have more detailed reports in the future, obviously. Uh, so we're moving on to consideration of the regular minutes of January third. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Any discussion? Did somebody second? We both we both they, made a motion. They both made a motion. Oh, right. I, I, Whoever yeah, made a second as well. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> um, Stick to account. <laughs> okay. So seeing no discussion, put it up for a put it up for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions. I will abstain because I wasn't present. Next item up is consideration of the special meeting minutes of January 12th, 2023. I have a motion to accept the minutes. So moved. Second. I just want to make sure I was there. Any discussion on the minutes? No. Seeing none, uh, can I have a vote for approval of the minutes from January 12, 2023? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention because I wasn't there. And I have a motion to our consideration of the special meeting minutes of January. Did I mess this up? Did I do 12th? Hold on. You're up to no, the we're on the ninth. Okay. We did 23, right? Yeah. yeah. We're on the ninth. Okay. Special. Uh, consideration of special meeting minutes of February 9th, 2023. No, I'm sorry. We didn't do the yeah, 23rd. Yeah, we didn't do 23rd. I said 23rd, but it was the 12th. Which is during the 12th. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the meetings of the, excuse me, the minutes of the special meeting from January 23rd, 2023. So, so second. Discussion. Any discussion? Okay. Can I have a vote to accept the minutes? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm abstaining. I wasn't there. Like a uh, motion to accept the special meeting minutes of February 9th, 2023. 
So I'm going to type it. And um, any were, discussion? You were there. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> First day on the job. Yeah. Any discussion? Seeing none, can I have a vote to approve the minutes? Yes. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Can I have a motion to accept the special joint meeting minutes of February 9th, 2023? So moved. Second. And I flipped over myself, nothing. All three, four. Any discussion? Seeing none, can I have a vote to, I'd like to vote to approve the minutes of a special joint meeting minutes of uh, January 9th, 2023. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Like a uh, motion to, for the consideration to approve the special joint meeting minutes of February 14th, 2023. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. No discussion? <clears throat> okay. Can I have a vote to approve the. Uh, Aye. Is, all favor? Aye. Motion carries. All right, now we're on to the business. Okay, the first word of business is consideration of tax refunds in the amount of $17,410.74. And these are a result of overpayment of taxes. They have a motion to accept the uh, tax refund. So second. And I'm okay to really discussion. Very three, three, four. Yeah, yeah three, four. Um, All in favor of, uh, Authorizing the refunds in the amount of $17,410.74. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, the next order of business, uh, we have to have an appointment for the Who's the Town Resources Recovery Authority, HRRA, for the membership. Uh, we have one member and one alternate. Um, normally, it's the first selectman who is the member. Um, sometimes the one or the other selectman can be the one as the alternate. Um, I'd like, well, we need a motion. I, I make a motion to make uh, Dan Carter the permanent member and Richie, if you want. Do you want to be the alternate? Sure. Uh, select and straight to be the alternate. Second. Okay. So all in favor of uh, Dan Carter becoming the member and Richie Straight the alternate? Aye. 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 I'll oppose motion carries. Thanks, Richie. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Okay, there's a fun one. <laughs> and we go by these individually, right, for appointments? Yes. yes. All right, so <clears throat> we have a list of appointments uh, available for different commissions. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make the motions for each one mm -hmm. and just kind of make it simple. Um, first up is the Commission on Aging. Um, we have one appointment available. Um, I'd like to nominate uh, Justin Lewis of 12 Star Lane. Second. Any other appointments or nominations? Sorry. That was uh, that's the eighth point. That is, uh, oh, we have a. That's the one I have. I mean, I'm, I have the benefit of having the, the letter. You don't have the letter in there no. anymore? No. Okay. This is a letter that was supplied to the Democratic Town Committee. Um, yeah, obviously, okay. by, by order, if you want to put in. You know, nominations, you can certainly do so. Um, right now, we're, we're nominating Justin Lewis. We have a second. Okay. Can, can you designate what party they're from? Because we uh, of course. So, uh, Justin Lewis is a Republican. The, uh, the person leading the board is uh, Diane Golden. Oh, so to replace it. It's replaced. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I'll make that clear as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Make a motion to vote on. So, so I may, yeah, I'd like to uh, to vote on the motion. It's up for discussion. Yep. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None partial carries. The next appointment is on the Economic Development Commission. Um, the current person leaving is a Republican, Jay Streeman. And um, I'd like to, excuse me, John Freeman, official name. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, keep, or should reappoint John Freeman 
of 18 Colonial Drive to the Economic Development Commission. Thanks. So his term just expired. <coughs> yeah, term expired. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, so, yeah. I, so, I, I thought you said he was leaving. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm leaving. sorry. Uh, he's, yeah. expiring. Yeah. he's expiring. Yeah. Um, okay. So all in favor of uh, John Streetman uh, being reappointed to the Economic Health Commission? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Okay. So next up, we have the Ethics Commission. There are four terms that are expiring. Um, we have, uh, in, th in this case, we have two Republicans who um, I'd like to nominate for the positions. And that would be uh, Stephen Duchel to be re re mm -hmm. uh, reappointed to the board. And also Fran Pulley be appointed to the board, uh, preferably in the position, I guess, of uh, Janice Patzel. And then um, my understanding is we have two Democrat spots. Um, in communication with the party, um, they recommended uh, Patricia Orsino and Jenny, is it Sar? Tessa. Tessa is, okay. That's who was recommended by the party. Um, so can I? And, well, and yeah. wasn't it Matt, Matt, Mark Russell? Right, so, but it, of course we have an opportunity because we have uh, three Democrats uh, right. leaving. But uh, out of the three Democrats that we could appoint two, correct? You can vote two. Yeah, and, and I'm just, I, it's kind of up to you. You want to put another name for it. I had spoke to uh, the party chair that's coming to be put forward, but. Okay. The, the, you talked to uh, I did. Dan, uh, not Dan, uh, Nick. Nick. Yep. Okay. It's important right. to have that input. So um, I guess we'll do these, we can do these as a one block appointment. So what I'll do is um, I would like to make a motion that uh, we appoint, well, it'll be a reappointment for Stephen Duchel. It'll be a reappointment for Patricia Orsino, a reappointment for Jenny Tsar, and a first time appointment for Francis Poole to the Ethics Commission. Second. Any more discussion? No. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have one appointment to the Housing Authority. Uh, Republican Marilyn D'Amico uh, would like to be reappointed from term inspired. So I make a motion that we reappoint Republican uh, Marilyn D'Amico to the Housing Authority. Second. Discussion. Uh, just yep. Uh, there was no other. So appointments there. No, just we just, just have the one. one. Yeah, and I, um, actually, I can share that with you as we go through. If that's okay. These are okay. Um, all in favor? Mayor Lee, right. right. All opposed? None. Motion passes. Next one is the Insurance and Pension Commission. Um, we have two vacancies. We have a vacancy and a, a term expiring. Um, I would uh, make a motion that we appoint Robert Kaslowski and uh, reappoint Edward Tomasco to the Insurance and Pension Commission. So um, they're both Republicans. There should be one more opening. I think Ken Kopech's term ended. Uh, yeah. There's uh, one, that was two, a, that three, was a, that was His term ends in 2025. According to this, it's 2025, yeah. Oh, I thought it was the website. Um, said he started in 21, so okay. 25. You can take a look at that next meeting just to make sure. Okay. okay. So, uh, so the motion on the floor is to uh, appoint Robert Kraslowski and Edward Tomasco. All of them have a lot of experience in finance. It's right. Yes. Okay. okay, guys. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Okay, so Public Site Building Commission. Um, there was a, uh, a vacancy um, back in December, it looks like, from uh, Dino Guattari. Um, I make a motion to appoint Joshua Adams, 25 Grand Street, to the Public Site and Building Commission. Second. And, um, I concur with that. Josh is very knowledgeable. Unfortunately, he moved away and now he moved back to town. He was a great asset to the town uh, and the building site committee uh, uh, with the school renovations. So, well qualified person. What, were there any on your list for Public Site Commission? No. Okay. Um, just keep in mind there. We could have seven, we can have seven max, seven members. So that might be somewhere we want to recruit in the future. Yeah. Um, and actually, oh, we got two pages here. We also have uh, Gary Regan, I'm sorry, another vacancy. I'd like to uh, include it, then my motion to include Gary Regan of 96 Nashville. So this is actually one, one, two, three, four, five. For the public site? Building? For the public site building, yep. 
No, Gary was going on different. No, he's going he's on. on new. Yeah. Oh, which one? You. 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 Okay. Yeah. So maybe I say that. She, she, she went to my change dad. from that. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, Gary doesn't. <laughs> well, it doesn't, it doesn't have any of those tapes, so I thought it was a nice one. Okay. So we'll keep, keep the original one. Uh, Josh Adams, 25 grand street. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Any opposed? Non motion passed. Okay. So next up is. Um, uh, here we go. I got two pages in these. Am I missing nobody? Okay. All right. Next up is sustainable. Well, actually, there's nobody on sustainable Bethel who's come forward yet. Um, yeah, I just well, want to say that, that's a whole yeah another issue. Uh, originally, <laughs> that commission was set up as seven people, and ten ended up on it. So technically, you only need the seven okay. to be appointed. Right. So a couple of people have resigned. So if, as long as there's still seven people there, I think they're down to four. Oh. <laughs> so then they um, need some more people. We were gonna need some more people. Yeah. So just put that out there. But Those watching, no, we don't have to fill today. There's nobody, nobody's or put anybody ten. forward. No, we don't. Uh, in fact, it's seven to... max is what what they've yeah. written here. So we only want to appoint today. Um, no, but I, I want to put it out there that they're they're open. If people are interested out there, you know, let us know. All right, no worries. Um, okay, next up, youth commission. Um, we have three <laughs> appointments to the youth commission. Um, first, we have an expiring term. Um, we'd like to, I'd like to nominate, excuse me, I'd like to make a motion that we appoint Jen Lewis of 12 Star Lane. Marie Muthers Ball would be a reappointment for 16 Greenwood Avenue. And uh, Gary Regan from 96 National Road. So those would be the three. Second. Second. Any discussion? And, and, and they're, they're all? Yep, they're all expiring terms. Actually, one has been, has expired uh, back in 22 and wasn't filled. And then the other expired in one January 23rd. Excuse me, Dan. Who yes. was the second one to be reappointed? The reappointment one um, would have been uh, Marie Muthersball. Can you spell that last one? M U T H E R S B A U G H. Okay. Um, so we have the motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Finally, we have the Youth Commission. Um, that was that, that was uh, alternate youth commission alternate. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> so we have uh, two spots to fill. One damn bigger Republican. Um, I would make a motion that we appoint Joan Hislop of Five Evergreen Drive and Kelly Parides. I got the right Perlie. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't have her address, but those would be the uh, two I would. So. Okay. Any discussion? And those are one's a Republican, one's a Democrat. Those are all for the alternates, alternates. right? That, okay. That's the alternate. The two he gave you are the alternates, the alternates. Mary, not the ones before. Oh, okay. They're on the actual commission. These are alternates. Right. So there's no confusion. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. <clears throat> Thank you. It is a long list. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next up, uh, consideration of um, some of the ARPA funds. So the first one is a consideration of mobile radios in the amount of $163,510 and a license plate reader in the amount of $17,777 for the Bethel Police Department for a total of $181,287 from ARPA funds. So moved to consider. Okay. No, second. Second? Richard, you want second? Well, second. Okay. Discussion. So well, discussion. Before we, hey Marty, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Hey, I can hear you. Marty, just as we go down the list, if you have any issues saying it could be a misuse of ARPA funds, can you just chime in and say, you know, I know the police department, we're on good ground with that, but yeah. anything that you don't feel meets ARPA standards, just let us know because I don't want to get the town into a <laughs> audit situation we, yeah. where we misuse any funds. We had some of those conversations earlier. Um, okay. Attorney and I will definitely bring those up because we're going to talk about um, Okay, well, obviously this is a uh, this is a police department. Good use of ARPA funds. Um, I think really the, uh, the big problem with the mobile radius has been that at this point, if one of those radios goes down, we basically lose a car. They're not serviceable anymore. 
So uh, that's why we brought it forth this way. Any discussion? Um, this wasn't carried in uh, capital or anything? It, it's been on the capital list for several years now. It has been pushed back a few times. But um, the biggest issue is this recent letter we have is basically they can't fix them anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I understand that it's a kind of a emergency type thing to get these radios uh, up and running, and uh, but I'm concerned about taking it from the ARCA funds that it's not uh, uh, a capital item in the regular budget, and it's been carried in the regular budgets for several years. Correct? Several we've years. Uh, it's been probably, probably well, at least three or four years. We've had it projected out. And we've pushed it back a couple of times. Yeah, I think it's been out there. Marty, are there any rules on supplanting of funds in ARPA? Do they talk about supplanting of funds at all? I think there's some, but I know most of the ones that I've read have indicated that you can combine them with other funds or substitute. I, I think it's doable. I don't think okay. I think it's a situation where because it was yeah, I mean, someplace else, as long as it's not paid for twice, I don't think it's an issue. And it's, it's, it's emergency services and yeah you know no and I'll, I'll support the motion with that. you know yeah. i just so i pulled the 2023 capital plan so last year's and at the time the chief was thinking he could replace them over four years to the tune of twenty one thousand dollars a year so it's eighty four thousand over four years and i think now that they've gotten to the point that they've gotten way more expensive then they just can't replace them anymore yeah I mean, in a perfect yes, world, it would make sense <laughs> to stage them in, but like, we have the ARPA funds now, and yeah. you know, maybe we get a few more years out of them and stage them in when it starts time. You know, we, we're more careful about when we replace them and try and, if you and me are still around at the point we need the radios, <laughs> you know, maybe we could stage them in then, but I'll support the motion too. And you're getting two plate readers, Steve? Or one? Yes. Yeah, it's two. No, it's, I'm sorry, it's one. Just Dual and, and take the old one and reinstall it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are they dual yes. or single? No, both dual. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. What's the difference? So dual, they have two uh, front readers, so front and back, so they can get cars coming at them and cars going away from them. It's actually we just had single. We didn't have dual, so it was yeah. very nice. So it's one, and we have one that's huh. several years old that still works. And we're going to reinstall it. No, they're a great tool. They're, they're, they're a great tool. I don't work there anymore, so you can say whatever you want. <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> okay, you guys are ready to go to the motion. Yeah. Um, right. Yep. I move. Uh, I move. We uh, use ARPA funds for the uh, license plate readers and the mobile radios in the amount of. $181,287. Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Next up. Okay, so there, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll make the motion that uh, we vote. Uh, actually, let's just do discussion first. Let me just do that. So let's talk about the turf field lighting and security maintenance equipment. Uh, it's an amount of uh, estimate cost of $800,000 for our funds. Well, I did have a conversation with town attorney on this earlier. I think we need a motion. We need a motion to discuss, need a motion to discuss okay. it. So just, yeah. just say I'd like to open the discussion. Moved, yeah. Yeah. I move that we uh, have a discussion on the turf field lighting and not being on top of it. Second. All in favor? Second. Aye. Second. Aye. Okay. Marty, you want to chime in? Yeah, I'm here. So uh, we're looking at the uh, $800,000 from ARPA funds for the turf field lighting. Right. Uh, I have uh, I have some uh, trepidation about using ARPA funds for this. Um, as most of you know, there's three main categories that are designated, and they're pretty broad, and uh, they cover a lot of things. But you know, yeah, I'm not so sure that in this case, you know, usually anything with students or children, when it's when it's health and safety, is something that you could factor in. I'm not so sure lights on the field are going to qualify for that. Um, and I think if you look under the regulations, or I should say the uh, situations where they talk about improvements to parks, 
there's some questions about that too, if you want to include it under the park. It talks about disadvantaged neighborhoods economically and it's supposed to help help out. And I just don't think that this kind of fits into the category. I mean, you've got replace lost public sector revenue. It's not that support COVID-19 public health and economic response. Well, that's pretty broad. You may be able to get it under, but I'm not so sure it fits all the scenarios that they give you. And then provide pay for eligible workers performing essential work. That's not the situation here. And then invest in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. And it's got nothing to do with any of our infrastructure. So I, I think it's a problem. I mean, that's my, that's my opinion from what I've read. And there's a lot of paperwork on it, a lot of paperwork. Maybe it would make sense just to table it and do some more research and reach out to, Brad, don't you have contacts? with uh, the people administering this. And it's hard because it's the federals. They will not give you any pre-approval. Not um, pre-approval, but they could say that, yeah, I mean, that's in the spirit of our They case. have been very reluctant. They won't even like. Well, we could try, can't we? We could try, yeah. So I know that. Rather the, than just take it off the plate, why don't we just see if we can do a little more research on it? I know that yeah. the state just approved $7.1 million for passive parks. So the state's using it for parks in our tree. For park state to improve state parks would we qualify for that or that's just for their state parks yeah but you don't excuse me for interrupting but you don't know exactly what parks and what neighborhoods i mean i i've got a couple of the papers here and, and if you read here it talks about disadvantaged neighborhoods disadvantaged neighborhoods economically disadvantaged neighborhoods you know and i, I don't know what parks are talking about. if they're talking about beardsley park it's possible that they consider that in Bridgeport, and I'm not knocking them, a, a disadvantaged neighborhood because of where it's located. So I, I wouldn't compare it to the state. It doesn't say that you cannot use it for parks. It says that it should be used for areas where there's, the neighborhoods are disadvantaged economic wise and otherwise. That's all it says. So I, I would have to examine each one of the parks that they're doing it for and where they're located. And I don't mind working with Brad with this. I'll talk to Brad. We can come up with it. I, I think we just table it. And, yeah, that's and, what I, and, I agree. And not I wanna, just next. I want to throw something out there too. There, there are some. Right, right now, there's no definition of what economic disadvantage is in Connecticut, except for with the marijuana statutes right now. Um, there are places in Bethel that certainly could be parts of town, perhaps. So yeah, I would I would take a motion to lay this on the table, and we'll come back to it more soon. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, don't okay. deny it. Yeah. Just the agenda March 7th. Come back to it March 7th. All right. So do we, I think we have to have a, a vote to lay it on the table. Mm -hmm. All in favor of laying uh, this uh, consideration for appeal on the table? We'll have to take it on March favor? 7th. Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. We just, in terms of the lights, though, you know, I do believe there were conversations before they started this project and there was assurances that the let that field would be lighted. Yes. So yes, I just yes. I really think we need to take that into consideration <clears throat> as we examine yes. this further. You know that there was there was a promise made to the donor. I didn't make it, but there yeah. was yeah. there was talks. So right. we okay. just need to keep that in mind as we move forward. Okay, so uh, I make a motion that we consider the uh board of finance recommendation to take one hundred and twenty eight thousand eight hundred ten dollars from uh Department of Public Works chassis from our performance for the chassis from our performance. Is that okay. good? <clears throat> All in favor? To, to talk about it? Yes. Aye. All in favor? Aye. To talk about it. No, we're going to it. For discussion. We're talking, we're just uh, talking yeah. about it. We're just right. talking about okay. it. Okay. Yep. We're not, we're not passing. <laughs> no. But it's, 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 <laughs> okay. So I mean, um, it's on your agenda. So it's uh, right. So you, know, the, you, um, can, you can make the motion to put it on the agenda and then. Okay. Very obvious, yeah. 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 Okay, so this was kicked back. Um, this had gone to the uh, Board of Finance with the mm -hmm. recommendation of the Board of Selectmen. Correct. And then uh, the Board of Finance has sent it back to us for consideration to take out our funds. Um, there was also a discussion again with the town attorney with this one whether or not we could do this. So I'd like to open up. Um, Marty, you have some uh, input here on the uh, recommendation well, for the chassis? Well, yeah. <laughs> My first reading of it was I, I thought that it probably didn't qualify, but it's possible with the very liberal interpretations that they have 
where it talks about one of the things they include in there is, is road construction and road maintenance. So if you want to make an argument that it's for road maintenance, you know, purposes, you might, you might, you could probably do it, uh, that, but that's, it's still close, but I, I can't. I mean, road maintenance. I mean, yeah. the truck is being used to maintain our roads, right? Yes. Well, that's, that's what I said. It, yeah. it does talk about maintenance. And I guess, like I said, there is a, try to be a liberal interpretation. And if you, if you think of it along those lines, then it probably would fit within there. Well, I, I disagree for this, uh, for discussion. I, I disagree. Again, this is uh, a capital item that's been uh, talked about for, for years to, to uh, expend these monies through um, normal operations of the, the highway department. Uh, I don't believe it should come from the ARCA funds. But that's my personal opinion. It, it's normal business. Now, we shouldn't be buying trucks from the ARCA funds that, uh, in my opinion, the ARCA funds are for uh, special uh, uh, consideration items uh, to spend $128,000 for a chassis of the truck, uh, in my opinion, should not come from the, the ARCA funds. That's my opinion. Well, we, we voted in favor for two police cars out of ARCA funds. So buy those every year. So I don't really see well it wasn't here. over the news about buying the cars out well, of the ARCA funds too. We voted on it though. Right? Yes we did. We approved did. it. Yeah. You know I I think that this does fall under road maintenance in my opinion. I mean the trucks are used to maintain the roads. I mean plowing is maintaining a road. I mean it can't be snow covered. It could also go towards emergency services if we can't get our police cars out our fire cars out our ambulance car you know our ambulances out that's a big problem and you know i think the nice thing is richie and, and my feelings are if it falls under arpa it frees up the capital non-reoccurring for things that doesn't fall under arpa where we can possibly use some of that money for other things that the town may need I mean, Marty already said that it doesn't matter if it's on the capital, you can use it. You know, there's no supplanting of funds. So I, I think we're on good ground and I would support it. And I, I actually agree. I mean, there's, there's no question when it comes to public safety and maintenance of our roads, there's clear, um, there are clear areas we can use ARPA funds. So I think it does make sense. Any, uh, any other further discussion? <clears throat> I make the motion then that we, uh, we take $128,810 for Department of Public Works chassis from the ARPA funds instead of using CMR. All in favor? Actually, they second. I'm sorry. Well, I'll second it, but I don't think we can. Can we say instead of CNR, Brad, or is that Board of Finance? Board, Board of Finance. Finance. Actually, Finance. you're right. That's. Uh, so, I, mean, I mean, I would just, I would <coughs> so just say that we're, we're yeah. approving the funds of ARPA, and then the Board of right. Finance can say that because they didn't approve it. Right. The board, the board of finance yeah. didn't approve it, so there's really no reason to yeah, even say not to take it from CNR because they didn't approve it. I'll take that. As an, yeah, I'll take that as an amendment to the motion. Okay. All in favor. What, so, what was the motion? So, the, so the motion as as amended that we the board of uh, select we are taking one hundred twenty eight thousand eight hundred ten dollars for the Department of Public Works to purchase a chassis from ARPA funds. Correct. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed? Motion carries. Next up, um, let's, let's just make the motion. I'm just going to make the motion mm -hmm. up for discussion. Yeah. Um, I'm making a motion that uh, we take $45,591 for the highway garage generator from our funds. Oh, any second? Second. Discussion. Again, uh, I don't believe the forty-five thousand should come out of the ARCA funds. This is something that's been on the capital plan for uh, several years for replacing this generator. Again, you know, we used ARPA funds to buy equipment for the fire department, for the police department that's been in their capital plans. So, respectfully, you know, I don't necessarily agree with that argument. I mean. That's kind of like picking and choosing where we're going to apply it. Um, my only question to Marty is, does this 
you know, in your opinion, is this something, because I would have a question, does this fly with ARPA? That, that would be my question. Well, I think it would fall under emergency services. So I think it would, would be something okay. you could pay for under ARPA. All right. Okay. That's all I need to hear. Any further discussion? Okay. Can I vote on the motion to take $45,591 for hybrid garage generator from ARPA plus? All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Next up, I'd like to make a motion that we approve up to $25,000 for a fire apparatus study from ARPA funds. Second. Okay. So the, uh, the genesis of this was um, we were speaking with the fire commission, chair of the fire commission, and that there's an opportunity for us to have a study done, similar to what they did in Danbury, to have a little bit of, a, I'd say, insight as to where we should be placing our equipment and uh, you know, how often we should be replacing it. So this is a uh, this is a good way to kind of you know have somebody come in, look at it from a thirty thousand foot view, uh, and see what you know what would be the best for our town. Any more discussion? What, was this the amount <coughs> that he quoted, or was this what he was saying should this, be yeah, around? This is what they said it should be around. The Danbury study was twenty nine thousand. Uh, this is a much smaller scope, and uh, they haven't got back to the actual number yet. Well, why don't just make it for an amount not to exceed 25,000. Oh, and I'll say it that way. I'll correct it in a sec, because I, I said up to, and I should say not to exceed. Okay. Marty is, and I know I'm a broken record, I just don't want to see the town get into any trouble over this. Yeah. Is, is, is a study about how many fire trucks we need covered under ARPA? Well, to be honest with you, my would be yes, but I don't really know what the study is going to be. I mean, is it going to be not only how many fire trucks we need, but what kind of condition of the ones we have, what needs to be replaced, what can be repaired? I, I don't know what it is. So um, they did, in did most say, cases, it would be allowed. Yeah, they did say that the study was supposed to tell us take in the condition of trucks, right, and kind of come up with, at least that's what I understood DJ was saying when he was here speaking to us that they kind of go through a comprehensive list of what you should do. Yeah, I, I think it could fall under that. Okay, I'm good though. Okay, for the discussion, and I'll repeat the motion. <coughs> um, I move we we uh, we take twenty five up to excuse me not to exceed twenty five thousand uh, dollars to approve a fire effort study from ARPA funds. Second. Like to vote on favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? See that motion carries. Uh, Mr. First Selectman, just, just for the record, I, I know Brad is pretty good with the numbers. Where do we stand with the ARPA funds? What do we have left, you know, in, in the kitty, so to speak? Like 3.1 uh, million. 3.1 million after this. After right. all the expenditures that you proved tonight, it would still be 3.1 million through next year, correct? Uh, we'll check the it might be actually more. Might be closer to 2.85 as well, I guess. Okay. We'll see. I show that 2.9. 2.9 something. Sorry, Two oh, sorry. I was only like by 550. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me we'll tell you an exact number. One second. Yeah. So. Uh, $2,923,695 approximately has been approved. And is that balance. taking the HVAC out, right? Yes. For that's school. everything that the Board of Selectmen has approved so far. Um, so that leaves two million nine thirty six and some change. That includes the 855000 Because prior to tonight, it was two. Two million five sixty. You approved. Okay. So the eight hundred fifty five was covering the two. We're in the middle. Of the uh, hold on. I'm in the middle of the answer. Oh, we're still the. Well, hold on. Let me update. It's a little bit different. Yeah, I just want to make. Yes. So uh, at least two million nine eighteen and change. Two million nine eighteen. Yeah. Um. Okay. So almost exactly half of what's. It's approved. Just for thank you. 
for quick yeah. discussion. Does it make sense at some point soon we recess our meeting and we reconvene? Is that okay with you, Richie? Yeah, if we reconvene yeah, yeah, after the yeah. our joint meeting? Because we have some yeah. stuff coming up that we got to do. Uh, yeah, because you had them. Go ahead. Can we just ask that we, so the town labor attorney is upstairs because he's here for negotiations. We could have them in person or we could have them remote in three hours or so when you get to them. Well, if I'm here at 10 o'clock from the Board of Finance meeting, I'll be shocked. But that's beside the point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, 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 if and, what time have you finished up, you think? Then I'm not there in negotiations. Okay. I mean, I imagine our meeting will go to what, about nine? My guess is the agenda looks like probably two and a half hours. So 9 30. So, I mean, if he wants to Zoom to us, I just, it's just not doing justice for all these topics yeah, if, yeah. if we just. I just didn't know if in the next couple of minutes you wanted to try to clear that one, but it is executive, so you'd have to clear the room, you'd have to do all those yeah. things. So, yeah. Bob Dibble does all the things, wants to get from the seat. So, I like, make a, I like to make the motion that we recess until we'll after the joint meeting. Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 We are going to recess until uh, we reconvene after the board of selectmen. Yes. Yes. Do you want to make a, a, an announcement to everyone <coughs> that we're going to end this meeting? Yeah, we'll probably show sure, sure. we have to start the other meeting. So we'll have to yeah, that meeting. will reconvene after that meeting. Yeah. If they want to come back, they can. So those on Zoom, I don't know if you, if you heard that, we have recessed the Board of Selectmen special meeting. Uh, we have a 7 p.m. meeting, which is a joint meeting before with the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance. So we'll reconvene the Board of Selectmen special meeting after the next meeting. Okay, for those, uh, for those at home and, and here, um, we are back in our meeting uh, out of recess. Um, I'd like to start we, where we left off of the agenda. Um, with respect to the consideration of the discussion of the old police station, I'd like to lay that on the table for March 7th. I believe that requires a vote. Can I have a motion? That's my motion to do that. Lay it on the table. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Um, with, respect, uh, with respect to the, the Bergstrom well, I think that's a very easy Thing, we're just looking at proving the language, correct? Thank you. Marty? Yes. And yeah, Marty's on there. Um, Marty, looking at the uh, Bergstrom well, uh, item L1, Yes. all we have to do is uh, approve the resolution as written, correct? That's correct. Okay. So I, you guys all have the resolution in front of you. It's in your packet, item L1. Um, I would like to make a motion that we approve the resolution for the Bergstrom well, and I'll uh, I'll read it at, out rather. Uh, whereas by the townwide machine vote held on December 1st, 2022, in accordance with the Connecticut General Statutes 7-7, following a special town meeting of November 17th, 2022, the town of Bethel approved a resolution recommendation by the Public Utilities Commission and approved by the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance to fund an amount not to exceed $12,290,057 for construction of a well water treatment plan for the project referred to and known as the Bergstrom Well and Water Treatment Plan Project. Said funding shall come from bonding, bond anticipatory notes, loans, temporary borrowing, and or other appropriation as recommended by the comptroller to be reduced by any available grants obtained by the Town of Bethel and or the Bethel Public Utilities Commission, if any. Payment for the appropriate sums shall be made by the water account users of the Bethel Public Utilities Commission. So um, we have a second. I was a motion. Um, all in favor of approving the resolution as read? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Um, we just got the information regarding the HVAC from the high school. I believe this is time necessary. If, if it's okay, um, I'll make the motion to approve and then we'll have uh, somebody waiting from online here. So um, I will make the motion to accept the two bids, um, one priced at uh, 484,400 and the other bid was uh, $997,420. Um, your motion is it? to award. 
a 2 award, I thought. Yeah, I should say yeah, the accept. one bit. You don't, don't want to accept both. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like, I know, right? The whole day. Um, okay, so we're somebody to make sure I say this again. We're going to award the bid of four hundred eighty-four thousand four hundred dollars to the Catholic group. To the Catholic group. Okay. Um, and do I have a second? Second for discussion. Okay. So uh, discussion. Do you want to hear from Jen along? Uh, Jen, uh, the the base bid that was a little bit confusing on that. Um, so the the public works department reviewed all this. Yes, so we had a meeting and um, basically we felt comfortable awarding for ERU2 only, which is the base bid. Uh, the remaining items in the bids, uh, which are labeled as alternates, are mostly related to the HVAC grant. And we haven't heard back on the grant yet, so we don't want to move on that until we know about the grant. And also there were some concerns about whether or not these two particular contractors could handle um, such a large project, um, but we did as a group feel comfortable with replacing ERU2 because it is, it's pretty much just a swap out in a, of an existing air handler that's broken on the high school roof. So, um, and the, so the new piece of equipment, we want to get the, that ordered as soon as possible because we're really hoping to do it over the summer so that we can um, enable those classrooms that are serviced by this unit to become back online right now they're, they're science rooms and we can't do any um, sort of chemical related experiments because the, there isn't enough ventilation all right so the we're only doing the base bid, none of the alternates is that correct exactly yes yeah. so the intention would be to if we get the grant um, then we would probably we would go out to bid again um, to on the remaining piece of the work. Right. Okay. That's what. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. Can I ask? I, I didn't have a chance to look this up in the minutes, but was did the procurement committee review this and sign off on this? Not yet, um, because the timing. We'll have to have the procurement committee. So you might need to amend your motion to say pending approval by the procurement committee. I think you're correct. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Good catch, Marty. Thank you. So we, um, I'd like to uh, amend the motion. So the motion is to uh, award the, the bid price of $484,400 to CAFA group, um, who is the lowest bidder and subject to the approval of the, what do you say, the uh, procurement, procurement Betty? Do I have a second? Second. Well, I yeah, I think you just amended. You have to, yeah, you either have to second or amend. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Reverend, where are we taking the money from this? Uh, this is uh, ARPA slash ESSER funds, correct? Correct, Jen? Yes. Yeah, so the Board of Ed is paying for this. This was that first group of money that the Board of Ed had, and then we added ARPA funds to it for $1.1 million, correct? Yeah, around that. We had 855 that. But Jen, this is all S or the ER2, right? Yes. So this is all the Board of Ed money, which needs to be spent first before the ARPA anyway. So yes. And just, I mean, we're talking about a major project here for the schools. And I just want to make sure. Please explain how one bid comes in at 484 and the other one comes in at nine something for the same equipment. It just, you know, that's that's quite a difference in bid. Uh, well, we were very uncomfortable with the higher bid from Bayes management uh, because of that. So we had, uh, so uh, when we were in the design phase, Kohler Ronin had done a cost estimate for us on this unit, which was closer to the Kaffa Group bid. And then we also had STV do uh, an, a second cost estimate. And so the final cost estimate that we brought forward with our um, funding request was the STV cost estimate, which was uh, slightly more than what Kaffa Group came in as. Uh, so we, we did have concerns about what was in the vase management bid, especially for this, um, this piece of equipment. Uh, they had a lot of carpentry work in their bid um, that just really wasn't making sense to us. Is it, is it the same unit? Yes. The bid was based on a specific unit, so it was units side by side, correct? 
Yes, we gave them the specification, very specific specifications, because what we want to do is have something that will fit in the same space as our old air handler and also meet the HVAC needs. So you, you didn't you didn't specify the brand or the make, you just specified what you wanted it to do. Yes, correct. And well, Cole and Rowan specified the brand yes. or equal. Did yes. the, and they looked at Coffins group and they felt very comfortable with all the equipment and everything like that? Yes. Jen, how, remind me, how long ago was this big? Because I know Public Works had it for a while reviewing everything and checking. These, these yeah, these came in on January 23rd. Yeah, and I, I think I misspoke before when I said that the board piece of the money would cover all of this when I, um, we, this does come out of the 1.595 that we have allocated. It's the combination of the board funding and what the board of selectmen already allocated. Yeah, just, my main concern is, is what's the other company saying that they're all stuff? And, you know, cause if you look at the rest of their prices, like Richie said, they were actually lower. Yeah, if we did all the alternates, they would have been lower. Well, alternate one was lower, alternate. So, you know, is Coffee Group going to come in and then go, oh, well, we do have all this framing to do. We do have all this to do, and we're not prepared for that. I just feel like, you know, I wish I knew a little bit more. Well, they're, they're not they're not going to do any of the alternates. So I'm doing the base. No, I know, but, the base. but Brian's just, concerned they're missing something. They're yeah, missing yeah. something that another company saw because it's just such a huge discrepancy in bids and the alternates are lower. I mean, this company was lower on everything yeah. and then they come in twice as much as Kafa. So I just, you know, I just want to make sure that we're not proceeding in the wrong direction. Jen, on the alternate bids, they, they were separate projects that were added onto this, correct? What, what uh, the, the, the alternate bids are to add air conditioning to the 1975 portion of the basement of the, sorry, of the building that uh, have never had air conditioning before. Um, so that's um, alternates one, uh, hold on, let me. So, so basically, they were all separate projects. They weren't related. Yes, to yes, design. yes. So, right, because at one point we thought maybe we could, uh, we had a lower cost estimate before we started putting in some of the uh, escalations costs we're seeing in the market right now. Um, so, we at one point we were hoping that we could do all of this with our approximately one point five million that's already been allocated. But, but now we know we can't. Um, oh, is it safe? So Say that alternates one through four had no relationship to the uh, base bid of uh, ERU two. Yes. So e yes, exactly. Um, the the only thing that connects them is that they're all at the high school. How how many companies actually bid on this? Uh, just these two. Uh, and actually, we we went to bid twice. The first time we went out to bid, we got zero bids. Um, so we got some feedback and our original language in the bid had said a mechanical contractor. And we took that out to just say contractor so that we could um, get bids from general contractors. And we only received these two. And we did um, uh, ask some additional questions and got more a more detailed cost breakdown from both uh, base management and the COFA group. So I could share those with you if, if, that, if you'd like to see them. Then when the when the team looked at it, I mean, I noticed looking at the scoring um, that Vase hadn't had much with respect to municipal HVAC or, or, or with project upgrades. Was that? Uh, yes, the majority of their experience was car carpentry work, and they were going to use the subcontractor for the HVAC work. Uh, so, for example, the references they provided. Um, only one of their references mentioned HVAC work for vase management and when Bob Germanero called them. So when he called them, the, the person actually said they didn't do any HVAC for us. Right. So, yes. um, so we were a little concerned about their references um, and because they didn't include vase, uh, the, it just didn't include a lot of HVAC work. Um, we do understand that their subcontractor is experienced, uh, but you know, overall with the, 
huge difference in the price and the fact that they hadn't actually been a general contractor for this type of um, HVAC work before made us a little nervous. Uh, when I was in the selectman's office, I saw that, you know, that they didn't have much experience as they were doing uh, painting and carpentry work primarily. Yes. And then, like you said, they were having the subs do the subs mechanical work. So uh, there's two markups on it that do the subs. And, uh, do they do a performance bond on this sort of thing? Do they ever do a performance bond on this sort of thing? Um, I don't know for sure if we required it on this one. I know we have in the past. Jen, do you know if this one contained a performance bond of any kind? The overall bid, including the alternates, had a performance bond, but I'd have to double check if it applies to just ERU2. Okay. Um, but, it but it was in the bid wording. Okay. Absolutely. I, I think it did. Um, I'm trying to recall. I looked at this last week, the bid, and I, and I think it did, but we can always insist that it go on there anyway. I don't care what the bid says. We should always have a performance bond, especially when you're talking this kind of money. You're talking twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Another story, but something like this, you should have a performance bond. There's no doubt, no doubt about it. And the other thing I wanted to say too, when I reviewed the bid last week, uh, and I spoke to Sam Flynn, who's our purchasing agent, I told him that the bid was very confusing with the alternates and the base, and that when they redo it, if they're going to redo it in any way, shape, or form, they need to make it very clear what's an alternate, what's a base. Don't put them on the same page because people think that they're bidding on everything at once, especially the inexperienced. And I think that, that to Brian's point, I think the reason why that one company is so off is because they are inexperienced and they're not used to bidding projects like this. But what happened to that company? Uh, remember we did one of the projects where it was a municipal like consortium where they had all tons of contractors that yeah that was the well you that's what's being done in the municipal project in the front of the building there uh, it's being now done they, the MP. They have people that could do this the mp i don't know you probably could you could send it i forget the name of the uh, initial party probably uh, send it out to look yeah. Especially the alternates, I think, because you've got so many of them, you may get a few that very, very much fit into the picture. Well, I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I, I know what we're planning on doing. I understand that. But I really don't have a lot of materials or information. And I just feel like, you know, this is a big number we're talking about. And we only have one chance to get it right. And I don't want issues. Uh, you know, down I'm happy to share. So the RFP had over 600 pages of specifications in it. And um, I, I can share with you the two, the two full bid packages we received, as well as the additional questions they answered about the pricing details. Um, Jen, what's our, what's our time frame on getting this approved? Um, well, from the board perspective, we're hoping to do it as soon as possible, uh, but I do want you to be comfortable with the decision. So uh, we would, uh, ideally we want to order the equipment so that, the, and we know there's a, a lead time for any type of air handler like this. Um, so ideally we'd like to install it in the summer, uh, but if you guys need, you know, some extra time to go through all the documents, I, I think that's reasonable. If we were pushing this to March 7th, would that be a big hang up for you guys? Well, you do have a special meeting Monday night. Yeah, I, I would feel more comfortable with Monday if you don't mind, because um, we know some of these air handlers are taking um, a long time to come in. Right, I'm, I'm comfortable with it, but if there was any doubt, I think we should consider I, that. I, I list, I'd just like to hear, you know, maybe from the building site committee or, you know, I mean, we put these people in charge of these projects for a reason and, you know, me to sit here and just say, and again, I won't be upset if you guys want to go through with it. I could abstain from the vote. I won't be upset at it at all. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, I just don't feel comfortable based on some of Bethel's past projects that didn't go so well. You know? Earlier, the Eric was here, Public Works Director James was on Zoom, who did a lot of this work. 
I think it makes sense that if you do it on the 20th or the 7th, have, Eric come back have them come back because they yeah. went through the yeah. bid. Yeah, I think yeah. that that would be helpful if Eric they think, you know, yeah. came back and gave, and not that, it has nothing to do with you guys, Jen. It's just, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing and, you know, yeah. understanding the bids and why it yeah. happened that way. We employ engineers. If right. you have right. questions. Let's have yeah. our engineers yeah. here to answer the questions. Okay. Yeah. So um, did did um, uh, the engineer? I can't think of the name right this second. Right, Pierce. James, no. the mayo. No, the other. No, the. Oh, Cola Ronan. Yeah. Did they review this? Uh, they have reviewed it, um, and their take was that the uh, bid from Vase Management for ERU two was was way out of line. Because their their cost estimate was more in line with the other people. Yes, yes. Uh, I I don't have a problem voting on it, but uh, we could. It's only a week. We could table it to next week and have uh, mm -hmm. Eric and James yeah. talk about it. Because Jen, and you then, can even request Craig from Colorado on. on a, yes, with the hybrid can. piece of it. If the board is available, say six thirty that night. I know it's turned down five hours right now. I mean, yes. Brian's give me a look, <laughs> but you got me yeah, one. yeah, I can be there. Um, <laughs> you didn't get any more than one okay, so so I'm do? I'm happy to withdraw my motion. I'll for, withdraw my second, and then um, it's up to you, Brian. You want to do? Okay. Yeah, I make a motion that we invite uh, our town engineer uh, and Nicole or Roland to our next meeting, if especially they're, if yeah. they're available, yeah. just to discuss. The project just so we know what we're voting on and jen if you guys have anything you could email us that would be great and yes absolutely i'll send it out yeah. marty you check on the uh perform respond please yes perfect so um so actually rich started the first motion uh motion to table to march 7th i'll uh, second march, that no, uh, i'm sorry february 20 27 27 27 yes at whatever time you want. Okay. Like six o'clock right yeah so let's just so to give us time or no? Yeah, well, I was trying to. You know, well, you only have you one night, man. We should do four thirty. No, <laughs> how come it's four thirty? Just a minute. Just a minute. We're going to table until March twenty seventh. February twenty seventh. February twenty seventh. I got March twenty seventh. It's a long day, man. I don't think you have to pick the time yet because you can. We don't pick the time. Yeah, we can. You can pick. So I'm going to make that second. Yeah. And have your motion. All in favor of tabling to February twenty seventh. All in favor. Aye. Aye. But, but we got to post the agenda by. Yeah, she's on it right there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, motion passes. Okay. So that is going to lay on the table. Um, okay. There's really just the two things. Is he, is he ready? Because otherwise we can run to the next thing real quick. Why don't you start according to now, man? Okay. I'll, so let's just run. I'll run upstairs and talk to him. <clears throat> okay. I'm ready. So um, uh, I make a motion that we accept the Aquarian land donation. Um, I don't know how to refer to it, the, the property name, <laughs> but it's the land donation in front of you. Um, now, my understanding is uh, Aquarian can no longer use this land. Um, if you take a look at uh, where it sits, uh, I think it benefits us just to you know, accept it. Well, I think we'll have to decide what we do with it later. Which um, it was, it's open it's space. just an open space. It's so, yeah. it's so steep you can't. Yeah. That yeah. Yes, Mark. They had a well on it. I, I just wanted to say, if you look at the deed that I sent over, yep. it's it says by acceptance of this deed, grantee, here, grantee hereby agrees that the property shall be used solely for open space or recreational purposes as defined in Connecticut General Statute so-and-so. And, -so. and I'll say so you're aware of what it means. So it says for open space and recreational purposes means use of lands for agriculture, parks, natural areas, forest, camping, fishing, wetlands preservation, wildlife habitat, reservoirs, hunting, golfing, boating, swimming, and hiking. So there's a lot of things you can use it for. I don't I don't think for where it's situated, you're going to use it for much other than open space, so to speak. But right. You know, that, so, that, so Marty, when we when we accept it, um, do we have to say what it's going to be? I mean it's automatically in the deed anyway. So we just oh it's it's all it's it's an automatic deed you're sure. okay. So, you and, but what I would like is, and I know you're in the middle of motion. I've never done a title search. I don't want to, I, I waited till we got this because this okay. turned down by Pura the first time around. 
So that's why I waited. But I, I'd like you to make a motion to allow me to do a title search just to make sure we're not getting a pig in a poke here. Table yeah, so let's, why don't we do that? Why don't we throw the motion and um, we'll motion the table, give, uh, and, and I guess in that motion, we will allow Marty to, the town attorney to do a title search on the property. Any second? Second. All in favor? Has, a, well, discussion? has Aquarian given us a time limit, Marty, or they're being reasonable? No, they've been uh, given us a time limit. You know how long we've been dealing with this? Two and a half years. Yeah, and it's That's really how long it's really, taken to get them to this point. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, they couldn't give it. To so I, I don't think I, I can contact them and say, basically, we're in agreement. We just want to do, run do the final title search, and that'll be it. We'll be all set. Yep. Uh, Marty, the uh, I just have one question. Sure. Uh, you said about hunting on the property. Can we take hunting out of that? Well, I think you can. I, I think that. Um, I don't think you have to do all those things. I think what it what it is is that that's what they will allow you to do under the statute. Okay, so what you can do is what you may want to do is, and it's been done, I think, for the Franck Preserve, and I don't know what other ones, but I think you can always at any point say that you know the open space is going to be restricted to X, Y, and Z. But I don't think you have to do that now. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor to allow uh, Marty to do a title search and lay this on the table. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. And um, for those on the uh, on the TV, we don't have very much left on Zoom there. Um, we are going to be going in executive session to uh, talk about the ratification of the Department of Public Works Union contract. So with that, um, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. Okay, so we'll say Richie made a motion. Oh, okay. So part of the motion, do you have to invite in? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we're, yeah. So let's let's do that. So um, I'll invite in um, Mary Churchill and I'll invite in John Shea. Yep. Um, and you already said, do I have to invite you in or you want to invite me in? You have to invite me in because I'm not yeah. a member of the board. Okay, well, in, in the motion, we'll invite in Brad uh, Herring. Marty or. And uh, we'll invite in Marty Lawler. And that's it, right? Yeah. Um, with the amended motion, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed? All right. Great. So we're in executive session. Um, so Mary, you can uh, bring everybody back. Um, and when we do the motion there, Brad, um, is the proper term to accept the or ratify. 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 ratify ratify is the appropriate okay um okay so we're, we're back in from executive session um i'd like to make a motion that we ratify the tentative agreement with ask me council local four local 1303 188 it's a bethel department of public works employees may i have a second, second. Um, any more discussion Seeing none, um, may I have a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Offer the motion carries. Uh, with that, I'll I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Marty.